Hi, I'm Jeannie. Welcome to Mimi Craft, your home for all things creative and DIY on a budget. I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. Hello, you little Mimi Crafters. It's time for another video. If you haven't yet joined the family, I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you like what you see today, please give me a thumbs up and a comment. I absolutely love hearing from you. Now, on with our projects. Our first project will be a wall pocket. You see them all over Pinterest and I decided this would be a perfect project for tumbling tower blocks. Using wood glue, I'm using Dollar Tree Super Glue wood glue. Start by gluing seven rows of five blocks as you see on screen. With 150 grit sandpaper, I sanded the entire front side, then placed wood glue in all the crevices and pushed the sawdust in to give my project a smooth surface. If you don't want to purchase a needle tip applicator, you can use a pin to poke a hole in a brand new bottle of glue instead of cutting off the tip. This will greatly reduce the flow of the glue. When your sawdust and glue has dried, give it a sand with fine sandpaper. I used a 220 grit. To make the size of your pocket, which is actually a box, Glue together seven sets of two blocks. Another way to give your project a smooth finish is to use wood filler. I used DAP plastic wood wood filler in the color natural. When the wood filler was completely dry, I sanded it thoroughly with 150 grit sandpaper. This stuff dries real fast. Afterward, I removed the dust with the damp uh, paper towel. Here you can see the difference between one that's filled and one that isn't filled. Then I glued these sides onto the front. Make sure that the side you sanded and filled and everything is facing down before you glue these sides on. Place something heavy over these sides until it's dry. I decided to paint the approximately lower one third of this pocket box, whatever you want to call it. So here I am putting on some masking tape and I want to show you a really good technique for getting a clean line. Here I'm using white chalk paint. What you want to do is use a really dry brush, getting a little bit of paint on and then I'm dabbing most of it off and then using a tapping motion. That's uh, the technique I'm going to use right at the edge of the tape. This will keep the paint from seeping underneath and it'll give you a really nice clean line. After the fact, I went in and filled in the sides because I wasn't happy with how it turned out.
it'll likely take you two, if not three coats of paint to cover the wood. Here's a little ASMR for you. We'll just very slowly remove this. It's so satisfying. It's better than one of those pore strips you put on your nose. I recommend sealing the project to protect the paint and it also makes the wood a little bit more resistant to dust, really meaning that it's easier to dust if you seal it first. To make a hanger for the project, I'm using two screw eyes and some wire. All you have to do is mark where you want those to go. You get them started by tapping them with a hammer. They're threaded. Watch your thumb. And then once you get it tapped in, then using your hands, your fingers, you can screw it in. You can even put a nail in there to, to give you a little grip to twist it around nice and tight. You're gonna want them to be vertical, you'll see here in a second. Now I took some wire that I had on hand and I just wrapped it around one side, twisted it tight, then wrapped it to the other and did the same. I made a twin and this is how they turned out. I didn't make a bottom for these. They seem to hold my um, eucalyptus just fine without it. If you want to make a bottom, you can use craft sticks. The second project is going to be a clock. Glue 20 blocks together, 10 wide by two high. If any glue seeps out, it's important to remove it. You can use a wet or damp paper towel. Next, glue two sets of four blocks end to end, three sets of three blocks end to end, and five sets of two blocks end to end. Glue one of the four block sets to the top left of that 20 block set. This is gonna be the number one. Then, as you see on screen, begin using the two block sets to make your number two. Watch closely for the placement of the glue. You want the one and the two both to line up with your 20 blocks set on the left and on the right. Find the very center of that 20 block set. This is where you're going to be drilling a hole to place the clock. Place a four block set on the lower left of the project to start the number six. Use a square to make sure it's nice and straight. Take a three block set and fill in that space right there. And just follow the gluing pattern on screen to complete the number six. You'll use a three, a two, and a three. When the project is completely dry, flip it over and reinforce all those weak areas with craft sticks. Just use wood glue like you did for everything else. Drill a hole in the center of the project to accept your little clock kit. I bought mine on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. I decided to fill with a different color and even a different brand of wood filler on this part just to test it out. It was Elmer's wood filler and the color was golden oak. I liked it a lot. It matched the grain once I sanded everything. Mm -hmm. 
when everything's completely dry, sand the filler out of it. Again, this is the clock kit that I purchased. It's just a clock with hands. You have to make sure that the clock you choose has a shaft long enough to fit all the way through the blocks. Before I placed a hanger or even the clock, I glued a couple of blocks to the back of the project because the box was going to push the whole clock off of the wall a little bit. To accommodate this double block, I had to move one of those craft sticks and place it up a little bit higher. I glued on a triple block, the bottom of the project, to counterbalance the double block and sawtooth hanger above it. Attach the clock following manufacturer's instructions. And this is how it turned out. The third project is a light or sconce. Glue 14 sets of five end to end and 14 sets of two end to end. You'll be making rectangles with these. Before assembling the rectangles, use wood filler to fill in all the cracks and crevices, and then sand thoroughly. First, make four rectangles with the short sides glued to the outsides of the long sides. I preferred to make the rectangles doing letter L so that I could take advantage of the square. Now make three rectangles with the short sides glued to the insides of the long sides. Trace the width of this type of rectangle, that is the rectangle that has the short sides glued to the insides of the long sides. This is going to be a template for a lens that we're going to make later. This will be the width. You'll determine the height of the lens later. For 
the assembly of the light, begin with one of the skinny rectangles first. Place it as you see on screen. The backs are always going to be flush. This is how it looks from one side and the other. The outside of that layer is going to line up with the inside of the layer underneath. I think the rest is pretty self-explanatory just watching the video. Just keep alternating rectangles. I turned the entire project to lay on its back so that everything would be completely flush. While the glue was still wet, that is. I then turned the project right side up and placed something very heavy on top. In fact, that's a piece of leftover countertop. When the project was dry, I took out that paper template from before and just traced the height of the light and then cut the paper, and then I had uh, a perfect template. For the lens, I used one Dollar Tree chopping mat. Just traced my little template, cut it out. I did a little dry fit here, make sure it was gonna work out, and then glued the whole thing down with hot glue.
I think either a sawtooth hanger or a couple of D-rings would be your best option for hanging this project. This can be placed either horizontally or vertically, or perhaps you want to use hooks both directions so you have the option of hanging it either way. For the lighting, I bought some rechargeable uh, under cabinet lights. And those come with self-adhesive tabs on the back, but because I reuse them over and over, I use command strips. Command strips don't stick to wood, they stuck to the light, but I always have to use hot glue to stick the other part of the command strip on the wood. And here's the finished product. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, please leave me a comment. I really love hearing from you. Which project was your favorite? Do you have anything that you'd like me to try to make? Until the next one, bye!